Hello, welcome to tutorial 22. I'm also watching, and uh, the Qatar, the Qatari World Cup, what's going on? France have just equalised, they're playing against um, Australia, who scored first. Incredible. Um, back to uh, Python <laughs> and Unity and the Asina engine. We had just created these concrete mushrooms slash trees. We've created our tree system. Um, we've also got the inventory really functional now. So we can go and collect our collectibles. We can see text is reporting back that I've got three, um, three grass blocks. I can drag those over here and the three follows. I can drag it back down here, the three follows. I can press E to toggle off the inventory and start running around again. And then if I press, oh, hello Panda, if I press one, I've now highlighted the first spot, hot spot on our hot bar. And then if I try to build, I shouldn't be able to. Good, no building and no bugs to crash. Um, if I press four, I should now be able to build grass blocks, brilliant. Um, if I now go to, oh, oh, I've just built, I've just built three gla uh, grass blocks or placed three grass blocks. Um, but the number, the text is reporting back to me from the inventory that I've still got three there. So that's one of our first jobs. And the other job is to just play around with the trees a little bit, which we've placed on our map, um, using some, um, some Perlin noise. So in the same way that we're deciding the heights at different coordinates for our terrain, we're also creating like another height map, but instead of, instead of placing blocks at certain heights, we're saying if um, that coordinate is high enough, then we'll um, place a tree at that location on top of um, the, the actual terrain. Um, but we're also using kind of that height. It's not a real height, but the, the kind of like strength of that coordinate for the likelihood of having a tree, um, we're reporting that back or returning that number back to our function and using that to determine the height of the tree as well, um, which is useful. So we can have some regular predictable heights of trees uh, for our different maps. I'm just checking the score again, still one all. Okay, a massive upset today, Argentina beaten by Saudi Arabia. Incredible. Messi's team. A massive upset. And um, I, heard, I hear Saudi Arabia have now declared a national holiday <laughs> tomorrow, which is something like November the 23rd, 2022. Hello from the past, if you're watching the future. Uh, so tomorrow, national holiday in Saudi Arabia. Congratulations, Saudi Arabia. That's really nice. Um, right. Here's our list for tutorial 22. Deplete the stack number when building. Oh yeah, make sure our trees are mineable. Tree textures, I can update very quickly. Field of view, we can sort out and um, maybe get our location coordinates on the screen and audio as well. Um, also sorting out the tree. Let's add something here. 2.2 2, uh, tree Perlin distribution. So this is going to <laughs> this is going to be a short video. Whenever I say that, it becomes like two hours or something. But this really must be a short video. So I don't think I'll get through this list, but we'll um, do our best. So first, depleting that stack number. So let's think. It's probably in inventory. What's happening? So when we are uh, building. When we're building, we need to know which block type is highlighted down the bottom on the hotbar. Um, and then minus one number from uh, that hotspot's stack property. Yes. So if I go right to the top of this um, module, so I'm in the inventory system module. Um, right at the top there. I think I can delete these asterisks. We did that in a previous video. Um, I'm looking for the hotspot class. Here it is. So in the hotspot class, either in the last video or the one before, we've got a stack property. And so we can, what we're doing is 
decrementing or minusing one number from that property to keep a track of um, what the text is saying on that hotspot. So this dot t is displaying how many uh, items are in the stack at that point. Okay, so I said we need to go to build. So building happens when we press the um, the mouse, probably not in the inventory. France have just scored. I just got an instinct. I just felt like a, a goal happened. 2-1 now, 2-1 currently, 34 minutes in, in the first half. Um, I think building happens in mesh terrain because it involves generating a block. And many videos ago, this is where we generate walls, generate blocks, generate terrain. So all of that code happens here. Ah, here we go. So I'm in the mesh terrain module and I'm in the input function. So we've got left mouse for when we're doing mining and we've got right mouse up when we're doing building. So just as a reminder for ourselves, the building site or B site equals whatever is returned from check build. So that's our function that goes and um, identifies whether we can build. If the building site does not equal none, in other words, we can do some building, then we're calling generate a block at that position. Then we're calling gap shell. <laughs> that's to do with if we're digging down, sorry, that's um, placing some gaps around that block because it's on the surface so that we can't grow the underground on top of that building site. That's what was happening in the previous video, by the way, when we were building on trees or sorry, trying to mine trees, we get gap shells happening. Anyway, I uh, transgress, not transgress, I digress on a tangent. So down here, this is where we need to, um, this is where we need to deplete our stack. Um, how are we going to do that from in here? Where do I do it? Let's have a look at my prepare code because I haven't got the stack of the hotspot. So in the inventory system, what happens when um, when we click a button, input, subject and mouse, nothing. So how am, I, how am I doing this? How am I getting, how am I interacting here with the other one? Right, let's have a look at my prepare code. How do I do this? Um, if I go to mesh terrain, let's find the same place. Here I am. So I'm in um, input. And there we go. Um, after generate block, it looks like I'm iterating over hotspots. And then there we are minusing a stack. So I must import the hotspots. Oh, that's the answer. I go and import the hotspots from the inventory system. There we go. Um, and it looks like I grab everything from the inventory system uh, module. OK. That makes sense, doesn't it? Why did I just load up the uh, <laughs> my folders? My phone went off, so I have to uh, have to go back on it. Still two one to France, who are the current holders of the World Cup. Um, right here we are. So here's a building site. Um, let's make a little note, which is deplete block from the stack. Smiley. Oh, winky face. That accidentally happened. Um, so we want to iterate over the hotspots, which you can't do until we've imported the function. So 
down the bottom here we'll say from inventory inventory system um, import asterisk everything good go back down to um, input here we are here's building Um, so we want to say, um, no, for H for hotspot in um, hotspots, which we can just reference because we, we've just lazily imported everything <laughs> from inventory system. I assume I've done that for a reason in the past. Um, there we go. Now we want to say, if H dot highlighted, yeah, how do we know if it's highlighted? I don't think I've got a highlighted property, which I should have. Um, but we're doing we we are keeping track of which block type we're building with through the subject, through the player's object. And the good news is mesh terrain has got access to the subject. Um, so let's just look at the prepared code. I think it's just like subject dot block type. So I'm in the mesh terrain um, module. I want to be in input where I'm doing the building. Oh, that's how I do it. So my color will be black. Oh, yes, because we put a black color. OK, this. This is bad. <laughs> Let's put it in because I'm against the clock. If H color American spelling, um, England are playing USA on Friday. So I don't want to jinx anything, but American spelling. If H color equals equals color dot black, then we know that we're highlighted. And I need to comment this because this is terrible. Ah, uh, is is this hot spot highlighted? So we know what that means. So I'm saying this is bad is because you might have highlighted your hot spots with a different color, or later on we might highlight them in a completely different way. In which case, this code here, this algorithm, will no longer work. Um, what we need to be doing is saying in the inventory system or whenever we're, yeah, in the inventory system, when we are using the number keys to select different hotspots, we need to be talking to the hotspot and saying you are highlighted and then referring to that. Um, anyway, let's <laughs> let's just hack along and um, uh, refactor that later. Um, in fact, let's do one good thing. You don't have to do this, but I will. I will make a note on our running log of things to do. Refactor the um, current block type system or mechanism. It's not a system at the moment, it's just a Cludge. There we go. Refactor the current block type building mechanism because that's going to be really hard to maintain in the future. Okay. Um, if it's it's highlighted, then we're going to say um, if its stack number is. Um, If its stack number is greater than zero, let's do the easiest case first, then um, h dot stack minus equals one. There we go, deplete the stack, done. Um, oh, we need to then kind of update the text. That would be nice. Um, h dot t dot, oh, have I got a, I made a function, didn't I, to update the text? Um, 
Oh, there we go. H. Oh, it's in the item class. Update stack text. Okay. <laughs> so then, um, oh, H. Right, so each hotspot will have a reference to the item that it's holding. And every item has a as an update or the is it the item class itself? No, it's a it's a member function. So that's all I have to do there, right? Update start. Yeah, stack text. Lovely. Um, right. Yes. If what if now? we've got no items left in our stack. Let's do that. Well, this job is finished. So now we can kind of break from this iteration. So this break keyword will exit the iteration loop over the hotspots and job done. Okay. Um, but down here we're saying else or l elif else if h dot stack is less than or equal to zero. Um, I don't know how we would get less than zero. I don't know. Sometimes bugs might happen. I say that because we're only um, um, decrementing by one. So we should never be able to, you know, we always should hit zero and never minus zero. But you never know if a bug will happen. So. Or a cosmic ray hitting the the computer. So uh, what are we doing? Oh yes. Yeah, so that means the stack has to disappear. So um, h stack equals zero. First of all, um, h dot occupied equals um, false. H dot item equals none. I think I can do that, and um, I need to destroy that item. Oh, so I can do that here. So I can use the destroy um, function, which I think we've seen before. It's for destroying entities, and it's inbuilt to, it's from the Asina module itself. So destroy this hotspot item, and then that means that the the little block icon sitting on that hotspot will disappear. Good. And oh, we also want the text to disappear, don't we? So h dot um, text or t equals um, just an empty string or no spaces whatsoever. There we go. I think that's everything. Um, so we need to just comment this. So um, decrease stack number by one and down here we're saying if this um, if we use up all blocks then we're going to um, um, blocks empty out this hot spot there we go. So all of this is kind of emptying out that hotspot. Again, I would love to have a function probably on the hotspot class that that takes care of that. So we can just put h.empty and it will go and sort that out. Um, again, let's be really good. Well, not what if I was really good in 30 seconds, I'll just go and write that. But um, what's kind of OK is to say write, write an empty function to deoccupy, unoccupy, un to empty, <laughs> to empty a hotspot. And then go and use it in various places. Um, three minutes of extra time at the half time point, still 2 1 to France, Rabio and Girard, Giroud scored. <laughs> Girard. <laughs> there we go. Um, for France. Oh, shout out to Australia, who scored first. Good win. Nine minutes.
Fantastic number nine. Fantastic number. Right. Um, let's go and test our code. Save the module. We've been recording for 20 minutes. We've got our first um, problem here. Module object is not callable. Oh, so we've got a little random problem again. A little clash. Um, and that's presumably because I'm using it in the inventory and in mesh terrain. Um, inventory system. It's probably the... Actually, it's probably longer now, but I'm probably not using it. I'm using random as RA and mesh terrain uh, from random import random. Um, um, Just comment that out and we can reinstate it if I break things. Um, can oh wait a minute. I can't say like import random as rah rah and then go and find random. So that's, yeah, when we're randomly placing some um, stone. So in the generate block function. So now, can I say rara? And then does that avoid, so there's three more instances. Let's just have a look. Oh, this is, oh yeah, for uh, all the colors. Oh, this is terrible because rah rah is just horrible. <laughs> okay, save that and then go back to main and try and run. Okay, so it was. <laughs> so we were importing some modules via inventory system that was clashing with mesh terrain, and I've just called it something very different. So I should at least make a comment about that, uh, the reason why it's called Rara. Okay. Um, so we're collecting minerals. We're incrementing our block types. Now let's press one and go and build with some stone, which should be depleted. Lovely. We've got zero. <laughs> At that point, it should have deleted the, the block. Let's try and build again. Oh, yeah. We haven't looked at the mechanism for stopping um, building happening. Current spot doesn't have any text because we've destroyed something. Oh, God, what have we done? Um, it looks like I'm trying to update some text by referring to oh I see what I've done yeah I see what I've done so if we go back to me, uh, mesh terrain back to here we go so we're in the input function we're in the building place and yes at this at the end here what I'm saying uh, text um, the text object has a property called text, which is its actual message that it prints to the screen. But the text object itself doesn't want to be an empty string. So that's what was causing that um, understandable bug. You can see how I've made that mistake. Um, the other issue was, though, that we shouldn't have said zero. Oh, I guess if it is zero. Um, yeah, here we can hit zero. So I want to say if it's greater than one, that's fine. 
but if it's less or equal to zero now, then that's when we want to destroy things. Right, so let's just go and run. I can also demonstrate the bug with the, the, the trees. So if I um, just go and mine a tree, what's happening at the moment is we're we're building our underground walls because our mining system assumes, presupposes that every block that we're mining is underground or will lead to the underground like here. Those soil blocks, or sometimes randomly a stone block, um, are what we're seeing up here. This is what's happening underground. Now, if it's underground, then no problem. But if it's on a tree, it looks very strange, although very cool. And I think in the future we should, you know, we should create like these interesting tools, so that we could like, you know, like spray paint a castle, or program like a little bug to go and run and then it kind of um, spontaneously grows architecture around the terrain. I think that would be really nice. Um, yeah, growing architecture, I think, is a, a really appealing idea. Um, anyway, stop playing with the trees at the moment. Um, it's also given me ideas for how trees could be designed, you know, having like branches and things like worms coming off them might be better than Minecraft. Um, but, oh yes, so I need to be mining, so I'll go and collect a load of thingies so we can experiment. Right, let's try again with stone. So I select stone and then build, and it stayed at one. Okay. <laughs> That's because my logic must be terrible. That means it's not detecting anything. So I go to two, that goes to one, and then presumably I keep building, yeah, and uh, nothing's detecting there. Go to the grass block. And that goes to five, four, three, four, three, two, one, and stays at one. Okay. Um, and then we can still keep building forever because we haven't attached this mechanism to um, anything meaningful uh, behind the scenes. Okay. So, mesh array. If it's greater than one, greater or equal to one. No, it's got to be... No, we want greater than one. We want greater than one. Um, and now down here, we want less than or equal to one. And now we haven't missed out one. <laughs> yeah, so before we were slipping through there, when it hit, sorry, when we've got one, let's say one grass block, it's saying if my stack is greater than one, uh, which it isn't because it is one, so it goes down here. Else, if the stack is less or equal to zero, which it isn't because it's one more than that, it's one, so it's not doing anything. So that's why. So now we'll get trapped in here. The stack will become zero, um, which is bad <laughs> because we're one. You know what? Let's not even affect the stack. Let's, right, okay. I was talking about cosmic rays and things before. Let's just say if, so that we can all sleep at night, if this stack somehow is less than zero, then h stack equals zero. Otherwise, we don't have to worry. We can just let the arithmetic do its thing. That's fine, isn't it? <laughs> uh, anyway, so if it's less or equal to what? Oh, but that, oh God. Have we just decremented? No, we decrement up here, don't we? We should always decrement. Let's just decrement. Let's just save everyone's time. And just decrement there. If we're highlighted, decrement. Then we'll say, if the h stack is greater than, it should be, oh my god, I'm redesigning everything. If you're greater than zero, so just update the text and then break, job done. If you are less than or equal to zero, so this includes one letter, then um, if the HDAC somehow has slipped less than zero, just start at zero. Um, it's occupied as false, destroy text, okay. 
That now works. Uh, that is fine now, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, what we need to do is somehow signal inside inventory that we can't build. Oh, no, not inventory, where we are, where we are. So before we get to building, um, let's see. So I'm in input, I'm in the mesh terrain module, and then we're saying building. If the subject's block type, so that's what I was talking about before, so that means the highlighted hotspot if that block type is none return so what i really need to do is set the block type to zero sorry to none when we've destroyed the uh, when we've hit zero or less so down here i can say this subject block type equals none aha so there we're saying um, no blocks to build with. Good. Um, and then we should stop highlighting that block. Oh, no, we'll, we'll keep highlighting the block, I guess. That's fine. OK, let's just see, does that take care of our mechanism? Because we've already got this line, as I was saying, up here. So we've detected that we're pressing the mouse. But before we go to the um, before we get to building something, we've got this return call, which is triggered if our block type is none. Okay. Still half time. Right. Let's go and mine some blocks. Oh no, I need to go get one block to test the thing. Okay. <laughs> so if I select, right, if I try and build now, what happens? Nothing, good, because I've got no highlighted blocks. If I press three, I've highlighted the stone down there. And then if I try and build, I build, and down there, I haven't got a zero displayed. The block is destroyed. So the stack has been destroyed. The hotspot is emptied. Now if I try and build again, nothing should happen. <gasps> Yes, it's working. So now I go to number two, try and build. Good, eight, and I'm building the right block type. I haven't got blister building, so I can't build really fast. But something we could implement in the future. <laughs> oh, I've got none left. <laughs> I didn't keep an eye on my inventory. And then three, one, oh, one, two, three. Oh, that reminds me. I had a collectible problem before, didn't I? So I've got one back. And then if I, I don't know what I do. Go and collect it? I don't know. Oh, I can't build. Oh, no. That was interesting. So I, when I pressed one to re-highlight that that spot, I could build. So there's three. Ah, uh, yeah. Now I can't build. So it's something like when I've hit zero and I go and collect some things. Ah, we're not saying to the subject that you've got something. So in collectible system maybe when we're ch so I'm in the collectible system module when we're checking pickup we've got a new item block type and I wonder if we have access in here to the subject or oh, we have collectible oh of course because this dot subject. So we should be able to say um, um, 
just in case we have started a new stack. I guess this should be, should this be in here? It feels like it should go in the inventory. Let's have a look. So have we got, I know we've got like starting a new stack somewhere in here. Um, item, set texture, set color, fixed position, update stack text, drop stack check. This is where we're adding one to our stack. Ah, stack. Yeah, so this is where we're creating a new stack. Um, creating a new stack. And it's on the hot bar. That might be relevant because we might do this somewhere else for the main inventory panel. Um, so I just made that little note. It's actually on the hot bar. Um, and we just want to check um, is this hot spot highlighted? If so, um, subject can build build with new stack. So we want to say um, uh, if um, h dot color. <laughs> equals equals color black then subject ah do we have access to the subject here where are we we're in the item class no we've only got We've only got access to some other things. Right, we'll do it in the, um, the collectible system. <laughs> I'm going to keep my comment though. Scroll all the way back down. Here I go. So where were we? In mesh terrain? No, in the collectible system. The same is this hotspot highlighted. Um, Now I don't know how to get hold of the hotspots, that's the thing. Unless, <laughs> from inventory system, import item, comma, hotspots. <laughs> there we go, so just import the hotspots. <laughs> and then we can say, if, um, so now we have to iterate over the hotspots. So for H in hotspots, If, oh wait a minute, we don't have to iterate over them, we can get hold of our new item. Um, no we can't. Oh, damn. <laughs> How do we know where it's gone? Oh god, right. Um, anyway, if we found that hotspot, equals black, then um, I had the idea but I got distracted by my tea, 
games back on. Seal 2 1's France. France, Australia. Um, <laughs> what were we going to say? This is such a strange way of doing it. Basically, we, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, we've got the highlighted hotspot. And then we're going to say, if your stack... Um, if, sorry, if H stack um, is greater or equal to 1, which it may be because we've just a a collected a new um, item, which I assume <laughs> will be added to that hotspot stack, then um, the subject, which we've got access to here, your block type will not equal none, but will equal, and should I say, sorry, this dot subjects block type will equal block type, this dot block type. Am I passing in block type? No, this dot block type. Okay. And the this is the um, collectible here. Okay, I'm going to explain this. I'll summarise it, even though it might not work. But I'm basically saying um, we're in that situation where we've been building and then we've emptied our stack, emptied our hotspot, and now we can't build. But what if we go and collect something and it now occupies, creates a new stack on that highlighted spot? We should be able to build again. But previously we weren't because we weren't alerting our systems to the fact that the hotspot that's currently highlighted has got a stack there. So here we're saying every time we create uh, or create a new item on our inventory, i.e. it may be creating a new stack or adding to a stack that's already there, we just go over all the hotspots, find the highlighted one, and just check. If you've got more or equal to one, then you your block type will be this block type. But wait a minute, we've got to check that. <laughs> Good job I summarised that. Um, we want to make sure that it's the same block type. Because, like, right, so, i.e., this collectible that we've just collected might be... might be completely independent to the, the highlighted block. Hotspot. <laughs> I hope this is making sense. Or at least entertaining. Um, okay. So I want to say, oh god, so if... If this hotspot's items block type is the same as this block type. Then this subject block type, just in case it's set to none because we just emptied that hot spot, it's now going to be this block type. And that's fine. And also we can now break out of this loop. And now color is having a problem, so I think we just need to import that from Ursina. So at the top, we're importing entity vector2, vector4, load model, audio, destroy, and we also need. I just forgot. Um, <laughs> color. <laughs> there we go. Right. That's definitely going to work first time. Gone back to main. It's almost at 45 minutes, which is when I want to kind of like stop. It's running. Okay. Um, I guess it will be running because I haven't used any of the code that I just wrote. So we can still make collectibles. We can grab collectibles. Um, let's just get a variety of these little pickups. Okay, starting with stone. That feels like a tradition. Panda just fell out of the sky. If I try and build there, we've gone down to no blocks left in the hotspot. If I try and build again, I shouldn't be able to. Good, so I haven't broken that mechanism. But now if I go and get another stone, it should fill in that hotspot. Now before when I tried to build, it didn't build, but now it should. 
Oh my god. It worked. <laughs> that utter nonsense worked. So, if I try and build again, it shouldn't build. What if I go and get a different block type? I need some snow. So if I go and get some snow this time, that will fill that hot spot. But now, a new stack I should be able to build, but it shouldn't be stone, it should be snow. Brilliant. The logic works. Okay. And now, can I de deplete that? I can't build. Go and get some stone. One, two, stone. I should be able to build with stone. Fantastic. It's working. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Quit there. Um, just go to our thingy, our running notes. Done. Trees mineable. Um, tree texture. Tree purling distribution. Um, audio. Okay, so. I'm going to have to get to that next next time. <laughs> so tutorial 23, I'll get to the trees mineable and things like this. Um, and I better make that a nicer, a, a longer video with, or, or maybe a short video like this one, but where I do lots of things to do with the trees. So like a tree special. Tree special. And that should be, yeah, that'll be before we get into December. So I'm, I'm starting to think about some nice Christmassy things to do. Uh, maybe like a, no, I've got to say like some kind of like Christmas biome or something like that. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. But there we go. So we fixed a crucial thing for the inventory. It feels like the inventory now is a working system. Right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely evening. Let's check the score as we go into the second half. Still 2-1, France um, maintaining the lead. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much and goodbye.